Well, I mean, I'm quarterback. Chris is quarterback. Uh, although, although Paul, I mean, Paul, would, would he battle you for the job? Like, would there be a quarterback competition? I mean, there might be for a few days. So it's going to be <laughs> over in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. wait. wait Shut second. off that wait, audio. Wait, wait, he wait, wasn't wait. supposed to hear that. What the hell is going on here? I didn't say that about Paul. Is that Paul. age-based or ability-based? <laughs> it was both-based. It was it's both. both. <laughs> I went at full pledge. I said, screw him. I'm going after him right here. Like, Good he, to see you on a Wednesday. <laughs> nice to see you as well. You're yeah, right. right. He's he's 10 years older than me. <laughs> yeah. I had he, he was in the NFL for a couple of weeks. I was there for seven, eight years. <laughs> eight years, right. Yeah. yeah. You would have some good reasons to go there. <laughs> I know. I, I It was more I just had to put a kibosh on Ahmed and where he was going to take that conversation. Okay. I had to stop it right there. Yeah. All right? So, At some point, though, yes. there's a turf field yeah. indoors, like like next door. Right. Sometime, like in June. like Want to go out and throw do, it around? Yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, not competition-based. Right. Fun base. Yeah, yeah. I hear that. I'm yeah. always for that. Yeah. I am. It's been a while. I haven't thrown a football, I feel like, since probably the, the Super Bowl week. So I would suppose we'd probably, probably break some muscles. Both as they have do to it. sign a waiver from an injury <laughs> yeah. standpoint. Yeah. No doubt about it. I yeah. know. Now, I am a little bit, I got my arm in a little bit of baseball shape because my little boy's doing that and having catches like with him. Playing catch or like going catch. to the hole and winging it back to first? Yeah, no, I mean, just, just playing catch. But yeah. at least it's got like the arm in shape a little bit. Because okay. the first few days, I was like, holy So the next day, right? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. But now I'm doing it and I'm like, okay, I'm all right. Shoulder or elbow? No, I, I get um, more in the back of my shoulder, like the deceleration muscles. Really? Yes. Right. Listen, I, oh, this is a great. It's great. You're bringing this here. Yeah. If you're throwing and you're getting hurt and your elbow is hurting, you're not throwing the right way. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just trying to let you know. Football from or baseball? Any, in any one, either one. Because there's a lot of pitchers who throw the hell out of it. They're throwing the right way. And sure. Their elbows. Hurt. Well, yeah, they're also, listen, we're talking about pitchers, major league base, so they're throwing screw balls and curve balls, yeah. and the, the arm isn't intended to do some of that stuff. Right. So you're right. Mechanically, if they were just throwing fastballs, I don't think they'd have the quite the issues. Yeah. But especially with a football. You know, the great throwers, Brady, Rodgers, whatever, they can throw all day because they can put their body in the positions to go, wait, I don't have to make it all arm, right? Yeah. And then, therefore, now you can throw all day to where now you can get a lot of reps. Right. See, that's the thing that people miss, too. The guy with the sore arm has to go, it's been about 50 or 60 throws. That's I'm, I'm, I'm about it. Yeah. Brady's going, this is throw 370 for me, right. and I'm yeah. getting a lot of work here today right. and hitting the bullseye on all these. Why did you say yeah. 370 and Brady? Why do those know. two numbers go you're together right. now? You're, uh, you're right. I think he I could throw 375 and a half balls. <laughs> you're right. That was like okay. a, a subliminal. Uh, something. Yeah, something. Yeah. Uh, Freudian <laughs> mind slip there. Uh, but, yeah, it, but there is something to that, and that's where I do get – I feel it in the back of my arm, from huh. the back of my shoulder. Never been sore there. From the slow, the slowing down part of my arm, huh. where those the those decel. The decel is really where you should be sore as a thrower. Damn. Yeah. I'm learning here. Right. I didn't know that. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, we can talk about that. Well, you know, you know, we'll get into mechanics and everything like that as we go through the Chris Sims Top 40 Quarterback oh, Countdown it's that next time week. Of year. And we'll get into all these fun conversations. And that's it's kind of what the the entire pod today is based off of. Kind yeah. of preview in the Top 40. Right. Looking back a little bit, cool. looking ahead a little bit, and like I know you do all kinds of rankings for the draft. Yeah. So ranking isn't new, but like I think this will be the third or fourth that I've been a part of with you. People get so fired up. They oh do. Oh my gosh, the Giants could lose twenty-eight to three on Sunday, which has happened, you know, recently. Yes, right. You could say whatever you want Monday in the pod, and there might be a little bit of anger, maybe yeah. maybe a lot. Yeah, right. Nothing like where you rank these guys. No, it gets personal. People with this. are so angry at me because I'm sitting next to you. Yeah, no, trust and like me. And in I one know. way, it's good because there, there's that level of interest. Yeah, yeah. But right. every spring that we do this, I, I, just, I, I have moments where I'm like, I cannot believe how upset people are at these rankings. It's, it's, uh, you know, your quarterback is like fans' base's little personal entity. It's how they kind it's of view like the football you're team. About their kid. It, it, no, there's no question. It, it is. It gets very personal. It gets very personal with the comments to me on social oh, media. I, I can only imagine. To where imagine. you go, damn, I'm just ranking I'm just quarterbacks. Talking about I'm quarterbacks. talking about you. Yeah, right. You know, and, and, and in all honesty, it, this is not, it's not an easy exercise. I don't sit here and tell you I'm right. Now, where I always feel I'm right is about the top five or top six. That, that usually is where I go, eh, no, f*** you. I know more yeah. than you. Shut up. Yeah. But, man, it's not easy. 
And I'm trying to make a list for where they are right now, not what they've done in their career. I'm also trying to project a degree of, wait, I, the player played a lot last year. There's going to be growth, and he's got talent. Yep. So I'm trying to place a little projection on it as well. And that's where it gets really tough. So, it's, so it's difficult. It is difficult. I know. I know you put a lot of time I, into it. It stresses me out. Is, is it enjoyable at all? Um like it's part of what you do yeah so no, it's gonna it's, keep happening it's kind of it, it mean I, I don't mind sitting down and doing the exercise okay. i don't i don't sit there and go oh man i get stressed out because i want to be right i want to be fair to people i want my reasoning to be the right way behind yes. it yeah and that's where i get stressed out about it um i don't care about the backlash or anything like that but yeah it's not easy and, and where it gets really hard is like 20 through 40 and sometimes 15 through 20 because it's so close it's nitpicking and like i told pete the other day like the top 10 i i i, I yeah, I've got to shuffle things around, or whatever, but I feel good about my top ten. Yeah, it's it's like twelve through twenty where I got to put on the film and go, damn, all, all these guys are so even. It's so close. I mean, last year twelve was Ryan Tannehill, twenty was Cam Newton. Right, so that one was wrong. I so, mean, but, but I mean, yeah. like twelve. But, okay, let's go one deeper. Yeah, you had twelve Ryan Tannehill, twenty-one yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo. Sure. And they're really, and we're, we're taking a look at this now. I mean, is there really a nine quarterback difference between those two? I, well, it's I know it's tough. Exactly. To right. your point, of how difficult that section is. A hundred percent. You know, I think yeah. You go Tannehill, Baker Mayfield, Derek Carr, Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins. You know, I had Joe Burrow there coming off the injury, but Carson Wentz there in that conversation. You know, yeah, that that to me is nitpicky stuff. They're all good quarterbacks, can do things. That to me is usually where it comes into. I turn on film. And that's when I usually start to go, all right, wait, wait, let me let me see what jumps out to me as I watch these guys. And, oh, oh man, I forgot. He is good at that right, right. there. Damn. And then I, <laughs> oh, wait, that, that, that guy does have an issue. And that usually is the one little detail or whatever I need to differentiate in some of those tough areas. And then you see here the bottom of the list isn't easy either, Paul. You know, again, it, rookie quarterbacks, backup quarterbacks are yeah, in the conversation. Yeah. You know, quarterbacks that are young that are just getting a start in the league you know all of those so when you get into the conversation of hey tyler huntley from ravens had a good year last year as the nice backup job. quarterback yeah, right yeah you know you talk about him and teddy bridgewater and drew Locke and you know geno smith and case keenum and tyrod taylor and taylor heineke and andy dalton on a new team and blaine gabbert and wh where where do you how do you figure out that last 10 guys or so on the list yeah so that's that's where i end up stressing out uh, it's really that 10 through 20 range the I middle range, about. Yeah. And the very end range is the, the yeah. two parts where I usually stress and struggle the most. I would think that that middle range would be would be difficult because in a way it's a good compliment about the league that I think that you go 10 through 25 or 12 through 24, whatever it is, whatever you consider the middle part of the right. quarterback play. Right. I mean, I know there were Hall of Fame quarterbacks when your dad was playing. Yeah. But the average quarterbacks right now, I think, are, I mean, a lot of them you could make a case should be number 12. Instead of 18 yeah, or sure. 12 instead no of 21. No doubt. That middle portion is really, really good. We don't, have, we don't, we, we are. Not great. No. But good. We're good. No. I mean, again, when you're talking about, you know, maybe the Matt Ryans and the Kirk Cousins of the world being around the middle of the pack. Right. I mean, f sign That's me up. They can good. be my quarterbacks. So yeah. I mean, yes. Do, do you have like a big board at home where all year you're kind of sorting these and thinking about no, it? No. Or I, do you binge it and go all at once? No, I do. Like uh, last weekend, I wrote down all the names of the quarterbacks, you know, in the league. All right. So I go through the whole roster and write them down. Then I get into, okay, now let me cross off the ones that are even in the running for a top 40. Yeah. All right. So let me just, okay. So, okay. Now I get done and I go, okay, I got 48 guys here that are possibly in the top 40. All right. And then I look at that and then I try to cross off a few more to go, ah, oh, that guy's not really in this class yeah. or whatever else. And I get to that. And then I kind of take the easy part first where I just kind of dance. So now I go, okay, I got my 43 or 44 guys that I think are going to be in the running for the top 40. Yeah. And then I kind of briefly then go to the fun part in the top 10 mm. and just go, let me just kind of get the top 10 out of the way. I'm not exact on it yet, but I got it close to the general way of what I want. And then I start to tinker off of that from right. there. And uh, no, I'm not completely done yet. And um, I got about three pages of like just 
names crossed off, different lists and all that. Okay, so Chris's yeah. top 40 quarterbacks come out Monday you start and is it 5 at a time? Is that I think four we're going to do 5 the fir- four the first day maybe. Okay. We stagger it. We're going to be have some on the podcast, some are going to be on Pro Football Talk. Yeah. Uh either way, there We'll hit all of them. I mean, over the next month here during the su- 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 slow time of the NFL season, this is you where will touch them all. This is where we will talk something every day and, and hit a few of these guys. Some interesting notes about it as we preview what's coming the next month. Ten quarterbacks have changed teams from last year's top 40. It's insane. Ten. Yeah, right. I mean, ten quarterbacks changed ta- teams. You know, we got new quarterbacks in the league. Uh, we got the Deshaun Watson yeah. Like, what yeah. the hell do I do with him? He hasn't played in a year. And you had him at four. I know. I had him at four. I yeah. mean, he's not going to be there this year. There's, right. They're definitely not. You know, Russell Wilson, yeah, new team. I'm excited, all of that. You know, but, hey, there are some quarterbacks that rose up the ranks a little last year. I would think. And, like, I, I kind of highlighted. he didn't play his best football right? exactly. and was hurt. So, that, that's like, when I tell you, like, my top ten isn't finished yet. Yeah, you're still working on it. Those are the tinkering things I got to do. I know the names, and I'm pretty good with my ten. Like, yeah. I go, well, these are the ten best. Yeah. I just got to figure out, wait, is this guy five? Is this guy seven? What is it? And that, that's where right. I'm at. Yeah. I had your list in front of me this morning when the kids were still home, and I think they were probably talking about tests or homework where I should be – Totally listening. I was like partially listening and like really focused on this list <laughs> and thinking about guys that are real likely to move up. I highlighted three. Yeah, and go ahead. I'm gonna Let me say hear it. Yeah. I'm gonna say two of these three guys are gonna be in your top five. Okay. Okay. Last year you had Matthew Stafford at eight. Right. Justin Herbert at eleven. Yeah. Joe Burrow at seventeen. Right. My over under on those three dudes. I say two are in your top five. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't think you're crazy there. Okay. I don't think you're I know crazy you. at all. I know my guy. I'm not. Yeah, you know me exactly. Exactly right. You know me enough and know what I look at at quarterbacks. Yeah. You know, but yes. I, I, hey, Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert are definitely top five ish. Okay. Stafford's got to be ish. Ish exactly as yeah. well. No doubt about it. I mean, again, it's it's yes. So that's that's uh, exactly. I don't want to give too okay, much not, away. Not, just didn't but, want you to. But I don't. I think it's it's fairly. I'm not breaking news here. Mm-hmm. Herbert's a freak of nature. Yeah. And definitely one of the best quarterbacks in football. Joe Burrow is a freak of nature and the natural at quarterback. And definitely in that top five-ish conversation yeah, there. Yeah. So, yeah, those are the little things I got to just kind of hammer away here the last few days. And I would say three other guys that no matter where you put them, right. people are going to come at you. They're going to come at me right. because I'm sitting five feet from you. And who are those three? Here, here are my three yeah. names. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tom Brady. <laughs> yes. No matter what. had at 10. Yes. And I, I will not be able to win no matter where I put Brady. Of course. If I put him at three, most of the world's going to go, are you f- kidding me he's 45 yeah. if i put him at nine the new england tampa fan base is gonna be you're f- crazy he's yeah. number three <laughs> yeah either way yeah your first thought with the uh fox money and yours Woo! what was it i what was like, your first thought like shock wow oh my gosh unbelievable yeah. i honestly thought it was cool in a lot of ways yeah i really did yeah you know we, we talked about this a lot this morning with with florio hey the one thing i'll say to where it's rare is you know, I know people look at this and go, whoa, this is unreal contract. And it is. But this is Tom freaking Brady. There's only one. He's only He's gone to another stratosphere. He's not in. Clearly. I, I love Troy Aikman and Tony Romo and Chris Collinsworth. Yeah. This is Tom Brady. It's uh, We're having a game in Germany this year. Who are we bringing over there? Oh, that's right. Tom Brady. That's right. He's, he's going to go there to kick that off. He's the most global name in the sport. He's he's gone officially the last two years into what I would say is the Babe Ruth, Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, like oh, for sure that 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 four yeah. guys of being the number one icons in American sports history. Yeah. So like to get that guy to come to work every week and announce games when he's got money falling out of his ears and his ass. Yeah. Well, you're gonna have to make something like right. you're gonna have to get his attention. Can't you just hear the conversation? Because I never got the feeling this was the number one thing he wanted to do. Right. They tell right. his agent, hey. Tell them if they tell them if they double what they gave Aikman, and I might <laughs> right. listen to them. Done. What right. do you think? And I, like to, to me, like yeah. my first thought, Chris, was I can't wait. Not because of his Super Bowl titles or, or the money he's making. It's because he he is so good at being politically correct and likable when we get to see him. Sure. Um, you know, if the game goes poorly, he wears that. Yeah. And he's he's upset, and you can yeah. see it. But he's so good at just like. I'm Tom. I'm likable. I'm going to say things in these little likable little snippets, and I'm a team guy. You've been in the booth. Yeah. 
You know how it goes. Yeah. He's going to have to say what comes to his mind right. 95 times a game. No doubt. It's not going to be, oh, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to yeah. say this. I'm, I'm going to present measured. myself this I way. Hurt this person's We're going to get what he really, really thinks and feels because no there's no other way around it in the booth. And that's that's what I'm looking I, forward I'm, to. I'm with you there. I mean, again, he's going to have a lot of things to offer. He's got more personality than people realize. He's got great people skills, Brady. He's very quick-witted. So don't and that's going to have to come out. It will come out. Yeah. And, you know, again, he controls the conversation here, too. So it's not like he's being interviewed. Yeah. He'll keep it to football. But I, I, I honestly kind of applaud the whole thing. Yeah. I, I really do. You know, uh, I think it's great for the sport. It tells you where the state of the sport is right now. The NFL is absolutely mm. killing it yeah. in every angle. And it's just going upwards. So, yeah, we're going to pay a guy this much money to talk about our sport. And it's just going to add to the grandiosity of a game on Fox. And we're going to turn it on. And it's going to be like John Maddox. Like, Damn, Brady's here. It's a big day. It's a big game today. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what it's going to do. So, uh, I, I think it's kind of cool. But it's the first time ever, Paul. My biggest thing is yeah. that one of these guys is going to be this available to us. Yeah. You know. Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali. Oh, hey, there's a big event. Hey, there's Michael Jordan. Hey, exactly. How are you? Oh, show me look, for Muhammad ten seconds Ali. when right, I'm wearing hey, this. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah, we'll pay you to come to this party so we can take it's, pictures. It's all been controlled. So Brady far. is going to go and put himself out there on a weekly yep. basis and yeah. be in our living rooms, and that's different. And uh, Something I, we I, never had. One. I yeah. do like it. I, so I'm a big fan. I, I kind of sidetracked. Uh, sidetracked that worry. for good reason. That was a good talk. It, it's a timely conversation. Yeah. But the three names that yeah. I know, so no matter what you do with them, Tom Brady's one of well, them my seconds yeah Tua. right no sure. matter what you're right no matter what you do no question that really became a thing last year it, it's still a thing and in all caps yes Jalen Hurts yes Jalen Hurts without a doubt they leave anybody no, out? Jalen Hurts was probably my biggest fail of last year you which know? is one of my questions okay. here you got a question there want me to ask can, can I ask, actually ask that to you yeah which sure. is yeah. the ranking from last year as you self-scout thyself that you regret the most and I'll remind people, as I think you were going there, that Jalen Hurts was not on the list. Yeah, he was not on the list. He was one of those guys where I just talked about. He was on that list, and I got down to, oh, wait, here's 43, 44 names that deserve it, and I didn't put him on. Hey, listen, I had concerns about him throwing the football. Don't sit here and act like you didn't f like it's not a real. Like, come on. <laughs> now, get, that's where I don't like when people do that. They just they act like some of the things I've pointed out aren't real. They want to go, no, no, no. You watch the playoff game. There was other games, too. Like, and calm I'm, down. I'm raising my hand. Yeah, and I'll ahead. also say the way yeah. Philly started winning. Right. <laughs> the, the way they started winning is kind of a recognition of what you said about your concerns anyway. They became the number one rushing team in exactly. football. Exactly. And now they had the personnel to pull it off. Right. But part of the reason they went that route yes. early in the season because they kind of saw that too. They realized that right? that wasn't the best thing for him. We can't win the game throwing the ball and him being in the pocket trying to throw it 40 times a game. Now, so that was my question. Yeah. All right. But nonetheless, hey, there's more ways. There's more than one way to skin the cat, and okay. he plays quarterback in a different kind of style than maybe the traditional way we've become yeah. accustomed to. And Did a good job. He proved that if they play this formula and they play to his suits a little bit, yeah. hey, maybe not as many high degree, degree difficulty of throws. Yeah. Maybe a few more runs that are high degree difficulty, yeah. and they kind of vice versa that. You can make it happen, and he can play quarterback at a very high level that way. Right. He did a lot of good things. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. That was definitely my fail, though. I should have had him, you know, realistically – you know, again, I think going into the year, I, yeah, I should have had him somewhere in the 30s for sure. I think, you know, if I was going to be realistic about it without actually thinking about what he did last year. He'll be in this list this year. I promise I, you that. I put his There's over no under at 26. Okay. All right. So, okay. yeah, we'll see. Okay. That's that's a good – That's I, I hear you. That's about a – that's a good – spot there for you to set the I line i can't see him being too much above or below he has some tan you know intangibles that i really like his ability to throw the ball deep down the field is a skill that he has that i think is very good yeah and we talked about some of the precision throwing all that's got to improve um but but uh yeah he'll be on the list and that was definitely my fail or the one i missed most that and cam newton yep that would be my other disappointment you had Cam at 20. 20. Yeah. Cam was just a little bit where I just went, mm, I think he's still got enough in the tank for them to run the Cam Newton kind of offense and be able to do that and up in New England. And, you know, I I, I just I, – I, I was just wrong. I don't know what else to say. The okay. athleticism is not quite the same. The throwing you know? ability is The it? throwing ability yeah. is definitely not the same. And all of that has affected his decision-making too. So – yeah, there's a certain support and why, way of playing you need to have for Cam Newton to be 
on that list or in that list, and that's that was too high last year. So I want to acknowledge yeah. and also apologize to Ron S. Austin. I basically stole his question. He said, I want to know where you're going to put Jalen Hurts. Philly yeah. is watching, okay. so we, we'll all be watching to see where, where Jalen shows up. Oh, he gave a smiley face he with did. a little he laughing did. emoji. Yeah, We'll see if that changes to, sure. a, to a, a beat red crying angry face. <laughs> Corey Joskowitz asks, you had Jameis Winston and Taysom, uh, Taysom Hill in your top 25 last year. What is your biggest lesson learned from how that situation played out? Jameis played well and when hurts Taysom did not take over yeah no you know and and I don't know if there was a lesson that I learned I learned that hey Jameis is capable of taking care of the football and playing a smarter brand of football yeah. that's for sure he'd be another guy I'd go the short to intermediate passing accuracy quickness of the ball getting out of his hands has to improve but you know, I do think we saw a growth, even though he got hurt last year, of going, wait, we saw a little maturation from Jameis Winston. Taysom Hill, you know, I didn't bring him up. I, I, again, what he did last year at quarterback was not horrible. You know, he let's not forget he broke his finger, right? And he kind of had to play through that as he was throwing the football, and it wasn't the worst. You know, I don't know what I, I, I don't know if there was a lesson that I learned more than anything. You know, that's the tough thing about doing this list is – I'm going in the year going, wait, I don't know exactly who's going to start here, who's going to play. Um, this guy is the 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 toy, favorite toy of Sean Payton, you know, and there is some things that he brings to the table that I think are an interesting skill set. I do. Uh, but maybe I need to take more into experience, playing more, things like that. Uh, I, I Taysom was one where I tried to project a little bit. You know, and I'm going to get wrong with the projections every now and then. Right. All right. That's where, you know, like I've had years where I've got, it's gone either way. I, you know, the, Mahomes' first year in football, I made him, or going into his second year, I made him 30. Even though, I man, I'd seen the preseason and saw his last game, his rookie year against the Broncos, and went, man, that good i should yeah. make him higher but i didn't do it because i didn't want to hear well how do you know he's not good i feel like we you do that more it. now i do with your rankings i'm gonna be, you, you, you you've you've had that kind of reaction often enough you're like damn it i knew that well that's I what i'm I here for that that's what i'm here i'm here to do that that's the that's my job so i'm hopefully going to be able to project those but things you don't he like you don't hedge as much now as, as you used to no i don't i definitely don't i'm, I'm not as worried about or I, I i think about you know i don't want to say not worried I just I trust my own instinct there a little bit more. I have found that I have been more pissed at myself when I right. didn't trust my instinct right. than the other way around. With that thought, yeah. uh, victory lap. What's the ranking you're most proud of? Um, the guy who won the Super Bowl. That's the other guy that you know we didn't talk about him. It's the other polarizing guy almost every year on my list. Yeah, I've had him four and six and seven and and it's every year it's what the f yeah Matthew Stafford he can't win a playoff game. He can't win a playoff game. He can't be that good. No, no. Matthew Stafford, as I said in the pregame leading up to the Super Bowl, has always been a Super Bowl quarterback. He's just never had a Super Bowl team around him. And this was the first year, year one. It was amazing. Team finally as a team and goes right to the Super Bowl and wins it. And then not only that, not only that, gets to the Super Bowl and the whole thing team gets hurt and he has to drag them to the finish line and win the game for them yeah. like that's where i want to say screw off to all the matthew stafford haters of the world the team matters it's a real thing you had him at eight and uh like i said I, I think he's a real candidate to be in the top five yep i thought you might go with mac jones because even though we know he's better than the 30th best no, quarterback he, in the I league was now proud. i was proud yeah. I mean, back then that that raised a lot of eyebrows yeah no i I'm, I'm i'm proud of that one you're right for sure that that that's one where i look at him and go i feel good about that That'd be one where I'd go, you know what? I was chicken. I knew he would be a little bit better than that, and I should have done it. Mm -hmm. He fit New England. It was the perfect fit, all of that. Um, so that's one. I'll tell you the other rookie I wish I would have. Uh, Justin Fields is one I'm wrong. Justin he Fields with 39. the way that played out. You know, what he did, yes, he should have been bumped up a little bit as well. Uh, so those are those are the ones that you know, maybe jump out to me the most. I'm proud of Herbert at 11. Yeah. You know, people at that time were, I was, I got a little crap for that too, you know, but again, I think we saw enough in that first year to go, Whoa, we're, we're ascending in the, the right direction here. And I know last year I was close. I almost put Herbert in front of Brady. I, I was thinking about it going into the process. You had Brady 10, Herbert 11. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I gave Brady the edge there just because of, you know, the things he does bring to the team, the leadership, the fire he can bring to the team, all of those things I think are real. Six rookies last year. I know. Six. I know.
rookies this year is going to be a different different thing. I got That's really a big part of my last piece of my puzzles here with this the ranking. Yeah. I see, uh, according to the rundown, you are to ask me about, about the rookies. Oh, damn. I saw that. I am. I, you're right. I forgot. I forgot this little curveball. All right. So, rookies, top 40. You know, if it comes in and win, and, uh, and this is Dave, Dave. Dave's a ninja. Dave's a ninja. Look Thank at me you for helping that. you Way with to the go. Media. That was almost a Matthew I, W. moment right there. Makes me feel good. If it comes in and win now with a generic Team A as per usual, I guess he's trying to say that's how I do my rankings, which is what I do. Everybody's on the same team. Yeah. Right? So this is what rookies would you put in your top 40s at Dave Ninja saying, then Pickett's the guy. Maybe Riddle, Ritter and Corral as the Darnolds and Daltons of the world vanish into the, e the ether mm -hmm. as your high-end backups at the dregs of the list. Wow. All right, so first off, rookies, like what's your feel there? You think you got – you got a feel for me, and what what do you think I'll do there? Uh, first of all, props to Dave's a ninja for working in ether. Yeah, ether. and drags. Right, it's a first. A lot of a lot of good words there. Okay, so uh, do I think you will work in a rookie? Well, first of all, let's 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 start from ten thousand feet. There's no damn way you're gonna have six like you did last year. No. Okay, I'm gonna no. say that. I will I will put the over under on rookies that you have. Yeah. In the top forty, at two. Two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll say you'll have it's a fair number. You'll have corral. And pick it. Okay. 35 or below. Right. Maybe 38 or below. Right. I could see 38, 39. Hey, you're, you're not, you know, I don't think you're going to be far off with those projections. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have any of them this year. It's, it's, it's tough. I'm not, I'm not sold. They are. Yet. Yeah. I'm not. I mean, I don't, again, I don't have my, like I said, this, I, I'm not definite on my list yeah, here yet. Right. Those are, those are some of the back end roster decisions I got to, there you go. I got to figure out here. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, um, I would say with Pickett, he's the obvious one because he went highest. I think the way he was described and what I saw is that he's, he's right now, he comes into the league as, Kind of like a skill set of a really, really well trusted yeah, backup. Right, he's ready, and, and that's what that's what Mitch Trubisky sure. is. Sure, and I, I don't think he'll beat out Trubisky. So I think Trubisky's going to be the guy in Pittsburgh. Well, yeah. So I wouldn't have him. I, I would say the one with the best chance is Corral. Right. Because as much as I like the way this has played out, that Sam Darnold's going to get a chance. Right. I think by the time we get to November ish, I, I, I don't know if he's going to be the guy. Yeah. And Corral will probably have a chance to come in and show what he can do. I I um. This is one thing where I know maybe my uh, my 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 thought adjusting here, and this is where you know, like just be just because I had Corral mm -hmm. as my number one quarterback doesn't mean he gets ranked in front of Pickett starting this year for the reasons you just said. Like I know Corral is my number one guy for the draft. I made him number one in my rankings, mm -hmm. right? But. That's about a little bit of what we think he's going to be two and three years down the road in the future. This list is right now. Yeah. So that's where Pickett has a little leg up on those guys. Pickett, we know, is a little more ready right now. Do you think you know? he's better than Trubisky right now? Um, I think he'll beat him out. I, 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 yes, in my heart of hearts, do. I do. I think he will beat him out. Okay. I think that it, it'll be a pretty good competition, but I think ultimately he's the 20th pick. He's there at Pitt. He's pro-ready. You know, I think he would. Ha I think he'll have to mess it up in the preseason okay. for him not to be the guy. You think he starts out a little bit ahead? I do. Before they even throw a pass. Yeah. Him? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just. I, it, I would have said it's the other way. You would have gone Trubisky. I mean, had had they taken him at eight? Yeah. Instead of twenty, it right. just feels so much different that it's the back half of the first yeah, round to I me. Hear you. And I don't think Trubisky is going to be a top ten quarterback. Maybe even a top fifteen quarterback. Right. I think he's going to be decent. I think he's I, be I, I don't disagree good, with that. And I don't, I, don't. I don't know if Pickett beats that out right yeah, away. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, listen, Trubisky's got talent. There's no doubt. He's a good athlete. He does have a strong arm. There's no question. Hey, the things we need to see from Trubisky, and I think we he's grown, and you know, we saw it in the preseason in Buffalo last year. You know, it was in the pocket, dicing people up, doing that stuff. That's that was not his bread and butter in Chicago, where you yeah. go, oh, man, that wasn't the best decision, or you go, oh, that throw was a little off target and all that. So that's where Pickett is really good, yeah. And that's where I think that will be interesting. But like, is Pickett's overall arm explosiveness on Matt Mitchell Trubisky's level? No, Trubisky's got a more explosive arm. Mm -hmm. Is he going to be able to run like Trubisky? And Pickett's a good athlete, but no, he's not going to be able to run like Trubisky. Trubisky's a phenomenal athlete. Yeah, that'll be a fun one to see play out. Thomas Thomas Pena, yes, are one of our regulars. Mm -hmm. He's saying honestly none. 
can we clearly say today that Pickett is already better than backups like Andy Dalton, Case Keenum, Baker Mayfield, Jimmy G? All right. Well, hey, that's those are all valid points. Baker Mayfield ain't no f-ing backup. Let's just make sure they know that. Yeah. He ain't no backup. All right. They might have f-ed him over to where he ends up in backup bill here because there's no more seats left because Cleveland screwed him. But he's not a backup quarterback. He's still a starter in the NFL. So is Jimmy G. Now, the other ones, the Andy Dalton, Case Keenum conversations, it's a good conversation to have. There's yeah. no doubt about it. Right. You know, and those are the things I got to realize. Kenny Pickett has more talent than those guys. Right. Is he as good at playing uh, like the game and going through reads and all that as them right now? Yeah, I don't know. Those are the things I got to kind of work out in my brain. But like once he gets some of those aspects down, he's going to pass them in a hurry. Right. So that's where the projection thing comes in a little bit too. And that's where I got to balance it out and figure it out there. I think I find that Pittsburgh one really interesting. Uh, remove which one you like better, but you have a quarterback in Mitchell Trubisky who had a tough go. Yeah. W- drafted higher than he should have been, was not in a great offense, but he piled up a lot of experience. I mean, basically a four year starter. Yes. Okay. And Four-year starter in a shitty situation. Bad situation. And not a great offense. And got yes. to take that experience, get out of that bad environment right. for him, go watch maybe the best player in football, Yeah. Josh Allen. Right. Dable was awfully good, too. Yes. This could be his last chance. So, like, the sense of urgency there for him yeah, I would think to go seize this one. Pretty big. It's probably higher than Pickett, who is probably competitive as hell, but there might be a little bit of – Let's just see how this rookie year goes. Okay. Yeah, there could be. I could see it going either way. I yeah. really could. I, and that's one, you know, again, I'm just saying that I think it's Pickett. Sure. I, don't, I don't know. I right. don't know either. Hey, uh, our, our man uh, at Caleb Beard, he doesn't think – he says none at all, maybe Pickett. The others probably won't get a shot to prove a spot, barring an injury or a starter. Listen, again, he, he, I hear what you're saying, Caleb Beard, and you're right. But just because you don't get to prove it doesn't mean you don't get to make the top 40. You know, it's, that's where I'll, I'll push back a little bit. You know, just because just because you don't prove it doesn't mean you're not in the top 40 for right. sure. And that, that's what I we talk about all the time. You know, there's going to be some maybe young guys or talented guys or whatever who are going to be on the bench where I go, yeah, he's the bench here and this guy's starter, but, I mean, this starter sucks. And this right. guy's a really awesome backup <laughs> and would be better if he just got to play on this team where the shitty starter is. Right. So uh, that's that that doesn't necessarily lock it in stone uh, if you don't get to play or you are a backup. Pete was just whispering in my ear. Pete, I, can, can you can you We have a special guest time? here. He, okay. He's ready. Yeah. Oh, we didn't even tease this. We didn't even no, say it at the beginning. We got into we're our so, talk. We're so out of damn practice with this guy joining us. I that, know. You know. This guy, this rusty. guy, Big Phil, is here today to join us via the phone. Breaking news. What's up, Dad? How you doing, man? I'm doing well, and it's like you don't have to tease me or nothing because nobody cares. Uh, so just, <laughs> I care, Hey, Phil. here he is. And thank you, Paul. Yes. And I haven't been on the damn podcast, I don't think, but maybe once or none the whole off season. So that tells me you guys are desperate, and you go, wow, can somebody? <laughs> it is so May. you finally invite my May. ass on. So I don't know it's what May else 11. to say. May 11. Come on, Phil. Yep, yep, desperation time, you know. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a slow time. That's when we need hey, you. Hey, Dad, you got anything you want to talk about? You got something, you know, whatever? And I say, well, this and that. He goes, well, I talked about that already. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I don't get to talk 16 hours a day like you. Yes. And I... I'm actually calling radio stations. Hey, hey, I'm available, so I can talk a little bit. <laughs> you know? Well, the, and they're turning off, me down. People do care. All right, we have people all the time on social media that ask, yes. like, "Where's Big yeah. Phil? Where's he been?" All right, and I got a question for you right off the bat from from all social right. media. Chris Thomas, he wants to know how did Big Phil rank the QBs in this year's draft? Specifically, what did he think of Matt Corral? And do you Love think him. he beats out Sam Darnold and starts week one? No. Man, I, you know, for Sam Darnold's sake, I'd go, if you let a rookie come in, I don't care how talented he is, and, and beat you out with that football team and training camp and preseason, then, wow, I don't know what to say. Uh, <laughs> give the money back. But no, I don't think he'll beat him out for sure. You know, it's – look, you know – Going to training camp as a rookie, everything that's involved and all that. And uh, if you're no not a way. first round pick, it even adds yeah. to it more. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, not even. Yeah, that. And the, even if he was a first round pick, I don't think he would beat him out because it's not like Sam Darnold has no talent, and he's been there, and his friggin' career's on the line here, and he's got to try to save his starting job. Not maybe not for Carolina, but somewhere else. Right. And of course, a lot of that have to do with how Matt Corral does. But hey. 
I only deal with what I watch on the games, and I don't know all the off-the-field stuff. What I heard about Matt Corral was probably more than even I thought it was, but I thought he was, you know, the best one as far as looking at the film and all that stuff coming out. The arm, his quickness, uh, his accuracy, all that. And now, for some reason, he ran RPOs, and that's a really negative when all these other guys are grading him. Oh, he ran a lot of RPOs. Well, what the hell is the other guys doing? Throwing 50 screens a game and, you know, missing people, whatever. And I, I don't know. So oh, I know. I get, yeah. As you can hear, Paul, I get a little frustrated listening to some people talk about certain things. And, right. And I've, I've done a good job here in my career of not just single-handed, not single-handedly, not calling their names out and go, what the hell? I almost went on Twitter a few times after the draft before just to write things, just go, well, if I do that, man, that's really going to cause a firestorm. And i got enough problems in life, so I'll let it go. <laughs> well, Dad doesn't like when like the people bring up and pick somebody apart for one thing. Yeah. And then there's seven other guys who have that same one thing. Yeah, and nobody talks about it, and nobody like, oh, but the not we don't care about it with those guys. Yeah, we just decided to crush and ruin this guy's life on this one thing. Oh well, yeah, they, you know, what happens? That's is, where and, me you know, and Dad get heated usually, right. and, and that's when the simsness comes out, and we start being smart asses and going like, "What the hell are you looking at?" <laughs> well, yeah, I don't, I don't get a chance to really do that, and sometimes I'm glad, but you know, it's it. Oh, I got this guy's number one. If anybody says anything different, I'm going to beat him up and look at this. And, you know, I'm just like, oh, come on, give me a break. Phil, you know? um, I feel like so, so much was made of this rookie class of quarterbacks, uh, kind of on the negative side that, you know, did any really deserve a first-round pick? Or Now that it's happened, dust is settled. Both you guys know how important it is to land in a good spot. Good mentor, good team around you, good coaches. Which of the rookie quarterbacks, Phil, do you think ended up in the best spot? Wow, that's a good question. I got to think about all of them real quick. Willis um, in Tennessee. You know, well, Tennessee, of course, that's a good one. And you know, we we're going to talk about Tannehill a little bit. I was or whatever. I'll just say this right away. You know, Ryan Tannehill's probably in the worst position of a lot of these guys. Well, look, we know Kenny Pickett's going to get to compete for the job. Right. So, is that a good situation? Pittsburgh stable. Um, you know, I think he fits a lot of things they want to do. It'll be interesting to see the offense, all that. But they want him to be the quarterback as soon as possible. That I think we all would probably agree on that. Mitchell Trubisky physically has talent, got a good arm. He's not the most accurate thrower in the world, but, you know, his arm is strong. He can make all the throws down the field, all that stuff. And he's just a, you know, he's a pretty damn good athlete. And he's a big dude. And that'll be interesting. I think it'll be very hard for Kenny Pickett to beat him out before the, for the first game starting the year. But uh, what was the question, Paul? Well, which one is good? Which you, one of those rookie quarterbacks do you think is in the yeah. best spot for him for this next year or two? Well, well, you got to look at uh, down there. You you look at Ritter in, in Atlanta, and you look at Malik Willis, and, and I'll just make it quick in in Tennessee. Just right away, we have two guys that the fan base, the media, everything about it is. They're in the starters are in really tough situations because right. they're as soon as anything goes wrong, yeah. they're going to jump all over this. Well, we got to move on. We got to see the next guy, and I, I think that's probably the strongest when I look at it. Probably for Tennessee Titans, uh, yeah. just because the fact that Ryan Tannehill, the playoff game against the Bengals, it's there. It won't go away, and it'll be brought up every time he throws a couple picks or anything in any game. We're going to hear it probably the opening statement. Uh, on camera with the TV crew when they do Tennessee opening game of the year. Well, Ryan Tannehill finished last year with three interceptions. I think he stinks. And when they're going to play Malik Willis, you know, oh, my God. Uh, of course, I'm <laughs> exaggerating. They won't say exactly that. But it's the watch is on, and anything preseason is set up. If you want it to go well, both of you know this, you got a rookie quarterback, Malik Willis, got a good arm, can move around. It's going to be there for them to orchestrate and make plays and to make these guys look good. Right. And um, so that well, if they do that and they go overboard with it, all they're doing is creating another problem for themselves, especially early in the year. No question. All right. Wait. So wait. So just so for our man Chris Thomas, you would have made Corral one, right? Just from the film. Uh, oh, oh, how I rated him? Yeah. yeah. I, I just physically, yes. I think I do worry about his size. I even said it when I did one interview with somebody. I just said, look. He does look small when I watch him on uh, during right, the games. Right. And, uh, you know, I kind of thought – I didn't quite think that it was Zach Wilson. And I've heard you say it many times, Paul. We 
Christopher and I went down to training camp with the Jets, and the first thing you did after you watch practice, he comes around, you see him, you go, he's a lot damn bigger than you think he is. Yes, he is. And, uh, you know, so, and of course, he has tremendous talent. But I, I would guess Corral, then Kenny Pickett, I would go Malik Willis, Desmond Ritter, then Sam Howe of the Big Five. Right. That would have been your Big and, Five. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, I don't even, like, second-guess myself. I, yeah. just, I feel pretty I good you. about that. Yeah, you're, you, know? you're, you had Malik three because you thought the, the rawness was willing or, or so much so that you kept him at three even though, you know, you yeah. saw the some of the high-end talent and wow throws he was capable of making. Yeah, I know, yes. But, you know, listen, in the NFL – it's great to have all that talent and all that and have that arm, but now you've got to make decision-making and all that is a big deal and the complexity of the NFL, which is always a step up for every quarterback, but it'll be bigger for him than the rest of them because, you know, and I heard you say it, and, Paul, you, I'm sure you agree. I, don't, I shouldn't say that. I don't want to talk for you. But it was not a complicated offense, and there was a lot of things he did that don't, will not translate to the NFL, didn't right. find the next receiver, just lots of things like that. And will he learn that? Sure. But that takes experience. The only way you can be a good pocket passer and be this kind of guy, which you're going to have to be no matter who you are sooner or later in the NFL, and it comes a lot sooner than we think it does, you've got to make decisions and you've got to win with a lot of throws from the pocket. That's yeah. what we see every single year. And you talk about the mobility, that's great. It's a tremendous added thing for your offense, for the quarterback, but it's not going to win you the Super Bowl. That's right. So I don't know, Phil, when you when you jumped on, but basically uh, Chris and I today kind of preview him that his top 40 quarterback, uh, his list is going to start next Monday. One of the things I brought up to him, I look at last year's list and I see Stafford at 8, Herbert at 11, Burrow at 17, and I think all three of those are going to move up. Which of those three, between Stafford, Herbert, and Burrow, would you have rated higher if you were putting together a top 40 list for this year? Oh, which one would be my number one of those three? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm going to say um, – oh, that's a really good one. I'm going to say Justin Herbert. Don't have to think about it. Yeah. I'm taking him first. Yeah. I and everybody – I, I kind of did this. And Oh, over <laughs> Joe Burrow? Hey, look, I love Joe Burrow. I think he did great. He's got intangibles that we really can't even talk about. It's, there is something there in his natural leadership and all that. But Justin Herbert's physical abilities are so extraordinary that I'm just going to rely on that. And, you know, it, we, don't, we don't really don't take into account all the great throws that he makes or these top quarterbacks do that other quarterbacks can't make. And we don't give them credit for that. Yeah, right. We just look at it and go, wow, another completion. Oh, no. right. you know, whatever. No, it's – it's special. There's eight or ten guys max in the league that are going to make throws that the other rest of the league cannot make. And they're willing to do it. And we, we really never give credit for those great throws like we should. But you're talking about three really good yeah. throwers and passers of the football. And I heard Christopher this morning talking about Joe Burrow. Right on. So true. The fact you saw him warm up at the Super Bowl, Christopher. Yeah. I watched him in the championship game. Right. I noticed it all year and talked about it many times. Right. But even at champ in person, I went, "Oh my God, he's throwing the ball so much better." Yes. And that's saying a lot for a guy that yeah won the Heisman Trophy, won the <laughs> national championship, had a great rookie year, and all that. But man, that that just shows you what you can do with trying to find out a way to do it better, and then really working at it and getting it done. And the Cincinnati Bingo coaches, as I stood around some of them in warm-ups, I kind of brought it up, and they just uh, didn't even hesitate. Oh, no, what a difference. Man, you know, and I, they, they saw it right away, too, which is really cool. No question. Yeah, it, it's, it popped out. Joe Burrow is one of those where when you see it in person, you go, go damn, he's a little bigger than I thought. Yeah. Damn, yeah. His, his, his feet are damn, they're good. And, I mean, I watched every throw of him in pregame. Yeah. And every throw was a missile yeah. and it was spinning hard and yeah. i went damn his arm yeah i know i know is, and is, that was the first thing that caught me as right. i walked up you know i kind of sized him up i kind of walked behind and let me see and i went damn he's big and as boomer Esiason always says there's one key to being a really good quarterback in the nfl and i said what's that boomer you gotta have a big ass <laughs> 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 he goes 
got to have it. You know, Frank Reich says he can never be, you know, that guy because he just didn't have that big ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you and Boomer definitely had it. Uh, well, I don't know about that. I know Boomer's got a big mouth, but I don't know about the other part. <laughs> uh, no doubt but, about it. But, you know, it. It, laughing, just saying that, when I did see him, I just go, wow, he just, that was really what caught me a little bit right, of surprise. Right. The size of him, and and it's, uh, you know, of course, that's size is a talent. Yeah. Right. You, that's why you feel sometimes all these shorter quarterbacks, you go, oh, no, but, but it, it does worry you as they stay in the league and as time goes along. Because, like I said, sooner or later, you know, the, the great, oh, he's a dual threat and all that, that so, sooner or later is going to die in your career. And remember, quarterbacks every year, who, no matter who you are, you're going to do what? As a runner, you're going to get a little bit slower. Yeah, right. Oh, are the defenses slowing down? No. Yeah, uh, no. They just, oh, you're slowing down, my man. Let's get you out. And we brought in more speed and everything. The defenses, I even saw it last year with guys trying to run. Uh, sometimes I go, oh, my gosh, that would have been a 20-yard gain the year before, and now you're getting five because the defenses are fast. They're used to guys moving, and, man, they hunt them down like they're, as I always say, like they're on the Serengeti. <laughs> you know, there goes the animal. Here comes the whoever running them down and taking them down and, uh, and it, that's what happens, I think, to mobile quarterbacks as time goes along. All right. Well, speaking of taking them down, because I know this is where he is. He wants to talk about this. I don't okay. know exactly where he wants to go. Yep. But oh, what's that? Back to Tennessee in the Ryan Tannehill conversation. Right. Talking about that. I know he had the press conference a few weeks ago. You know, the whole, you got to mentor and babysit the kid and tell him every oh, trick you got in the world. And he went on his mental health things. And I, I think it's something to do with that, Dad. But, like, go ahead. Just You, you got the floor. Uh, kind of just rattle off some of the thoughts you have on Ryan Tannehill and, and the issues there in Tennessee. Well, listen, I listened to the whole interview. I, I'm sure you guys did. I don't think most of people, I don't know if they did or whatever, talked about it. But this mentor thing, I mean, you know, come on, let's don't get carried away with it. It's just like, oh, I, I heard one ex-NFL player say, you know, it was our job to get the next guy ready. That's what you do. And I go, oh, man, that's, that's such a crock. I mean, come on. Yeah, what is Ryan Tannehill going to do? He's a really nice guy. I think we all know that. Yep. You know, he, he, he respects people and will treat them the right way. Malik Willis, he's going to treat him fine. They're going to be in sitting there watching film together, and they're going to talk out loud I guess that's mentoring, you know. He's Ryan Tannehill's a really good worker, stays in great shape. He's competitive, all that. Malik Willis is going to see all that. Well, I guess that's mentoring. Mm -hmm. I mean, is he going to just, you know, what, what are you wanting to do? And Ryan Tannehill said it right. They have assistant coaches, quality control people, the head coach or whatever, the offensive coordinator, all those guys are going to be working and helping Malik Willis. So where does his role come into all that except set a great example, be the person he is, and that's being a mentor. Exactly. You know? Yeah. You know, I just well, this whole well thing. Said. It just, oh my God, headlines on you know ESPN. Ryan Tannehill. Whoa, whoa. But let's put it in context when he said the whole damn thing. Right. Yeah. It gets lost. You know. I, I think yeah. it's also guys that whether it's business or sports. I mean, I hear this kind of conversation. It's on the person looking to get mentored to make that mentor relationship work out. Pay attention to what he's doing. Ask questions. How can you learn from him? That should be more on the person looking for the mentoring than the one who's supposed to be the mentor. Uh, I agree with that. you got to endear yourself a little yes. to the guy. Of, of, I, I of felt course like, he's going to help I, you if you ask. Yeah, Brad Johnson, he, he was great. Right. But then when he started to realize like I was going to be a puppy by his side all the time yeah. and that I wasn't trying to like screw him over out of the right. job, I just want to learn. And, I, hey, I'm rooting for you like yeah, legitimately yeah. as I'm on the bench. Yeah. Like, come on, Brad. Like, I think once he realized that, yeah. you know, then it was like – he wasn't trying to go out of his way to mentor, but I was like, oh, he's going to the meeting room. Let me go right. in the meeting room and watch him. Oh, now he's talking about the play. Let me hear what he's talking about. Yeah. That was smart. Let me write that down. Yeah. So right. I guess he's mentoring me without mentoring me. Like your dad said, no, he didn't hold my hand and bring me into the weight room. So is he not a mentor there? <laughs> right. I just saw him going in, and I said, damn, I should do that too. Right. You know, so I, I, dad, you you said it right. I think that's exactly the right way. Uh, I don't yeah, get it either. It, it is. It, 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 it's just, I, I guess I really got frustrated. And I said, wow, this is one. One time I wish I was doing off-season work and being on every, I would have just went on and I would have went. I, I, it drove me crazy. I will say this, too, and people are going to take this the wrong way, but the fact that he opened up so much about his off-season and the everything mental that the last game all that. caused him all that, the mental, I'm, you know, that's all great, but 
you know, I, I don't know. I'm kind of in the school. I wouldn't open myself up too much because people are going to jump on it. Was, yes, they said, oh, we really commend him for this. But trust me, the people that say that they commend him for coming out and saying that are going to crush him for his weakness once if he struggles or whatever. That's just the way I look at it. And so I think sometimes it's good to get it off your chest, but think about it down the line. Hey, look, he probably did it. Well, I'm sure he did because it made him feel better, and maybe it kind of cleans his mind even more, and right. now he can go to work with the Tennessee Titans and just, you know, forget about what happened against the Cincinnati Bengals and just be who he is and feel really good about it and not be thinking about what went on last year and what I'm dealing with now. Right. And, right. man, isn't it amazing that, you know, he's had a really good career at Tennessee. Yeah. His numbers are never going to reflect what he is because of what they do. So everybody get off of that stuff, too. But it, it's he's in a very – I think he's in a very tough spot. And I even wrote down as Clock's I talked ticking. to you. Yeah. The t- oh, yes. And I said one year, probably two at most. And, look, they have a good year, which they are a good football team. They go to the playoffs. It's all or nothing again. And it, No, not again. It'll be all or nothing for sure Yeah. if they go to the playoffs this year. And we're going to judge everything about Ryan Tannehill. And – it's just going to be an interesting scenario they they got down there in Tennessee. No and doubt. then, look, the Tennessee Titans taking Malik Willis. Wow, of course. Look where they got him. Yeah. That was great. Right. They, they, they didn't have plans to take him in the first round and then let him go in the second round. So, you know, I think they know they got a guy that they're going to have to work hard on or whatever, get him ready for pro football. And I always say this, if you got the talent, sooner or later you'll find a way to for it to show on the field. And if you can't, that means, you you know, you got other things going on, but I have no doubt all these young quarterbacks, once they learn the rhythm of the league, see that they go, wow, this other quarterback's a lot better than I thought. <laughs> and, you know, see it in practice. This won't be college anymore. You know, you're not going to clearly be the best thrower on the field every time you go out there. Right. Some of them will, but you know what I mean. And uh, it takes a lot of hard work to become a starting quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, no doubt. But yeah, I think you said it right. Uh, Ryan Tannehill's on notice now, and it's going to have to play his ass off to keep his job for yeah. sure, at least into the future. And, and, uh, and he's going to have to really just be tough as hell, and it's him against the world. I don't did, know what else. Yeah. I think that's the best way. It's him against the world. Right. And, you know, and in the back of my of the mind of a lot of these coaches on Tennessee, they're like, wow, you know, they're, you know they, they want to see it. Uh, and they're going to judge him probably differently just because of that one game. Playoff games, that's the great thing is going to the playoffs. The bad thing always during the playoffs, especially losing the Super Bowl, if you don't play well and all that, man, it's held against you forever. Right. So, right. Unless you go out and win other ones. Because hey, he, so. he's played really, really well. I mean, his stats or the team's win-loss, I mean, been really strong in the regular season. He's 30 and 13 since he's been the starting quarterback yeah, in Tennessee. Good one. They can't wait to throw him out of there because right. he had one, you know, bad game in a playoff game because right. of that. Um, well, you know, too, look, yeah. I'll just well, just to always emphasize it. It's it's not like they're throwing 15 and 20 screens a game down there. No, it's, that's right either. It's oh, not quarterback it's another 15 yard in cut. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, it's yeah, down it's, the it's, field. It's high effort throws, and it, you know they're like he's done a really good job with that. But like I said, he'll have to fight his way through it, and we'll find out a lot about him and that football team as they start. All right, well, let's talk about another yeah. struggling quarterback who's fighting his yeah. way through life. His name's Tom Brady. He isn't <laughs> winning. Oh, yeah. He isn't winning. <laughs> dad, dad wants to talk about Brady, Bruce Arians, all of that. I mean, first off, I mean, I, I don't even know where you want to go with this, but like. I don't either. Well, okay. <laughs> well, no, I do. I do. Well, I, I mean, I got some thoughts. Oh, do you so. want to go with the Brady TV stuff here at all? Are you going to get into that? No, not the, yet. Not yet. Okay, I, I, fine. So, go ahead. Hey. You, it's your podcast. You just keep going and run, run the show. Don't worry. <laughs> oh man, do I get paid for it? Too? <laughs> God damn. Man, I like to do one of these things in my life where I actually get money. But it's hey, <laughs> the one thing that I think is a great learning lesson for all quarterbacks, and I, you know, I I put myself into it as an X one U whatever. Is Tom Brady has stayed natural to what his body should be like yes and you know this alex guerrero thing and i'll say this if, when he did it and i saw his i said man come on you got a strength coach up there don't do that and this but now looking back wow what a great move he was ahead of the curve got somebody to take care of him he learned more about his body all that and of course we know he's neurotic about throwing the football and his right. mechanics and it's it's unbelievable. Christopher, when you were on today, y'all showed him throwing the ball, and I went, 
look at that. Oh, my God. I mean, he was just ripping the ball to the right. receivers and everything. But the fact that he stayed natural has really been a great reason why he has stayed in the league so long. He's not put any stress on his body through the training, yep. all that. And, wow, I think it's a great learning lesson to build up, to get much bigger and, you know, muscled and all that. You don't want to do that. And um, I think the fact it's helped him take care of his whole body, but also it's really helped him too. That's why it was just another reason why his arm has stayed so lively right. and so good through right. the length of his career. Right. And, and, and my, my point being, if I was a quarterback in the league now or going in the league and start making the money of these guys, I would absolutely, without question, hire those guys to be around me and to take care of me every damn day. So, I so mean, what if you, you, Phil Sims, you know, meathead from Kentucky, living in New Jersey, who <laughs> used to squat with the offense and defense alignment and do hundred and ten pound dumbbells, Curls. bench press, and everything. Seen those videos? You've yeah. seen the one doing the power clean of the, yeah. the dumbbells. You're telling me you wouldn't, you wouldn't work out like that if you had to do it all over again? I would definitely change a lot of things I did in my career, and yeah. you know, not only that, I think the people around and all that would do do do, do it a little bit different. Yeah, right. And you right. know, look, I'm not complaining about. Look, we trained hard. That was great. Brought the team together. We had so many guys in off season program, and all we did was lift and run, run, lift, and run some more. That yeah. that was it. It was all great. But yes, I would definitely change a lot of things on how what I did to my body. I would have actually thrown more during the off season and hope that I had somebody to even show me more about how to do it easier and better. You know, that, that kind of gnaws at me a little bit. You know, as I watch eighth graders now throw the ball, and I go, damn, this <laughs> technique's better than mine was ever in my career. <laughs> and it's, you know, because they're learning. And yeah. So I think that's just, it's, it's just a great lesson for everybody, all players. But, again, they can do this because of the money, and everything, and they're learning a lot too as they go through their careers. And Tom Brady made a great adjustment doing all these things. So you know that, that's just my first thought on him. You know, you look at all these other quarterbacks. I will say, I heard you say this too today, Christopher. Paul, Christopher said, you know, you got to look at Tom Brady now in a whole different light than you ever have. And how can you even argue? I can't, and I won't. He's the greatest of all time mm -hmm. because of longevity. The fact that he can throw it the way he does. And now, with his great success and all that he had in New England, he's taken all that and just doubled down. Yeah. Now he is truly the leader of the team. Mm -hmm. He's a coach, really, whatever. Yeah. And he demands, and it, he's such an influence on the whole organization. I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen that. It, it, now he's knowing what he's learned the last two years, now going into year three, that Peyton Manning did this his whole career. Yeah, yeah, right. And he's and going, he's damn, going, why did I do this? <laughs> yeah, that's sorry. right. Yeah. I mean, Peyton, Peyton walked in the building and everybody stood up and saluted like, here we go. Yeah. Because the players, the coaches, everybody was on notice. And that is not an exaggeration because I covered many of his games, go to many practices, and the only voice I ever heard on the damn field was Peyton. And which when that first time I did it and I saw it, I just went, "Oh wow, what the hell's going on here?" <laughs> and then just, but that's the control he got pretty early in his career, and he took advantage of it, and he influenced all the other guys to make sure they knew their jobs, prepared, and all that. And that's the other thing. Last off season, we I did some camps with my son Matt or your brother Christopher, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and <Heard of> it. <laughs> and we were teaching routes to receivers, so he made a video. And we're watching the video, I'm going, you know, and it's after 15 plays, I go, damn, is Tampa the only team that ran good routes? <laughs> and and all the little things he was showing, I go, oh, my God, it's that's not talent. It's the way they do their yeah, job. Right. And, oh, my God, they're route running. And then I'm on, you know, inside the NFL, Julian Edelman's on there, and I brought up some of these points to him. And he goes, well, yeah, that's Tom. And I go, it's not the coaches down there? He goes, it's Tom. If you don't run the routes the right way and the way he wants it, the way is right, he won't throw it to you. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I've always heard that. Is that really true? And he goes, oh, absolutely, it's true. No doubt. And I just that. went, yeah. So the fact, that, just think of that, all that talent they have at receiver. And there he is coaching them along with the coaching staff and getting the little things ironed out. Uh, that's just another reason why we see we saw him throw for all those yards, all those touchdowns, 
and I don't think it's going to change this year. With Byron Leftwich calling plays, which I want to talk about, and um, Tom Brady being quarterback, coach, everything about it, talent, you name it, he's got it all. New England is – nobody can teach route running like New England. I guess. And I, wow. I've hit this in it before. I just know nobody – they te- how to run every route. There's little nuance difference. It's the same route, but it's cover two. Oh, no, now it's cover three. It's the same route, but there's going to be a nuance to it. And that's that's where they're special, and, and Brady's carried that down there. And, yeah, I'm sure he's taught that whole staff there a little bit about route running and how to do things. Right. You know, that, that, to me, was totally – Again, I was with John Gruden and some other great coaches. When I got with Josh McDaniels in Denver, I was like, damn, so that's how they teach that route all the time. It was it was eye popping that way. I want to just piggyback off of one thing what Dad was saying there a little bit, just because, you know, yeah, I'm I'm looked at as, you know, the Tom Brady hater, which I don't hate Tom Brady at all. I'm just maybe one of the few of people that ever will question anything. Mm-hmm. And I just don't let everybody just slobber all over him all the time. But sometimes I gotta go pump the brakes. I mean, he doesn't get the credit for everything, so I get looked as a hater. Yeah, I I was never one to go. Brady's the greatest quarterback of all time. You know me. I always yeah, push back against right. that. Yeah. I did, but like if I'm going to be real about the situation, it's kind of eaten at me really since the end of the regular season. Just go, all right, Tom Brady at his ultimate best. No, I don't think it's as good as Peyton Manning at his ultimate best, or Rogers at his ultimate best, or even John Elway at his ultimate best. But I mean, if you're going to be playing. You know, a a football for twenty one freaking years, and do it that well, yeah, and have more physical talent than people like to give him yes. credit for, like yes. what Dad's talking oh, about, his yeah. arm. It, it, it he, he he can do it so easy, and he gets his body in all the right positions that you don't really realize how fast the ball is traveling until you see it in person. Yep. Uh, oh. So because of that. Yeah, I'll, I'll be one to tell you. I've, I've definitely changed my tune a little bit to some people I've said on radio and things like that because of the Brady conversation and all that. Best of all time. I, I, I don't well, know. You don't, I don't know how. Like yeah, Dad said, ahead. I don't know how you can deny it anymore. Yeah, right. It's, it's kind of hard to deny it. Yeah. It is. Do yeah. I think he's the greatest you, you talent know, of all time? No. But everything else, yeah. yes. Yeah. That's so true. I think you know, a couple things. Yes, John Elway was an unbelievable talent. And I, I've said this to you guys. The first time I covered one of his games as a broadcaster, I went, oh, this, this son of a bitch is pretty good. <laughs> and I, as I stood there behind him in practice and went, okay, yeah, he is pretty good. You know, when I was playing, the hell with John Elway. Yeah, you know, I don't right. want to hear about that. Right. You know, but, you know, that, that's one thing. And I think, too, I, I, we got to remember, when you think about Peyton Manning during the prime, early in his career, second year on, to me. Yeah, right. prime, I mean, he could really throw. And, you know, I mean, that was a hell he threw his arm like Joe Burrow, even more drastic from year one to year two in his career was a huge difference. Huge. I mean, he really struggled throwing the ball as a rookie. Throwing wobblers and yeah. ducks and everything. Yeah. But then the second year, boom, spiral. Yes. Perfect. Spiral. Just and bombing it away, whatever. And I had him, I think, the second game of his second year. And I went down there and I watched practice the whole day, and I just remember going, "Wow, what a difference!" I mm. I couldn't get over it. Right. I mean, he was really throwing the ball with power and everything you want. Of course, Peyton had really, yeah, he wasn't a scrambler, but his feet were phenomenal. Yes. And the same with Tom Brady. Is I just watched a bunch of his stuff because I'm trying to make a video of how to do certain things as a quarterback, and of course, he's a great one to always check and you, easy to get examples from him. But his footwork in the pocket and how to create leverage when people are around him stand on his one foot, whatever it is, he just or uses his upper body to make the throws. He does a great job. And that comes from talent, taking care of himself, and just having so many repetitions during off season, throwing whatever, and so much in the games that you're right. I think we underestimate what we see on yeah. T V and just take it for granted. Yeah. It is special. Yeah. I I just but pregame last year, I'll just I won't forget opener Cowboys Buccaneers. Yeah, right. Man, there there was no question in who had the strongest arm on the field. Oh, not even oh, close. Yeah. Dak Prescott was out there. I mean, he's yeah. a good quarterback. He can't yeah. spin it like Brady can. I've no. seen him. I've seen him from field level. I don't know six, seven times. Yeah. The first time I saw it, probably. Oh five, oh six, right. Phil. I I kind of thought, okay, here's a kid. He's really smart. He's in a great system. He's just getting the most out of his abilities. A gamer. I saw him on a cold, windy day there in Foxborough from field level, and I said, okay, I take back everything I ever thought I thought about Tom yeah. Brady's ability. Yeah. He is throwing the hell out of yeah. this ball. Right. RPMs, spirals, comebacks, 
deep post routes, everything there, and it looks perfect. Like I, I had no idea. I know until I saw it in person. Yeah. No, dad, dad, yeah, you know what I've, I, I kind of know Paul, you, early. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're so right. I think there's like always, and I watch them play, and of course I watch the videos, and I watch and I go, oh, you know, he, looks, he it's just, okay, he just throws it so hard sometimes, I think he yeah. just, just feels like, I got to just really do this. <laughs> I, I just want to do it for my own self, you know, to feel good. Yeah, and a perfect right. spot. Right. And, yeah. and I just go, God, he threw that ball so hard, it's ridiculous, yeah. and of course, I'm sure he doesn't practice all the time or whatever. And the guys, I don't see him – that I don't go, oh, he threw it too hard, that's why they dropped it. No, no, they're, they're not doing that. I, they always say this about receivers, and I've asked many in my life, the guys that I work with, everything, do you want a quarterback to throw it really hard or do you want one with great t- – oh, no, I want that ball as quick as you can get it in my hands. And, of course, they want spirals too yeah, right. because right. it just – Science tells you it's easier to catch a spiral spinning that hard than no it is question. a knuckleball, you know, at 100 miles an hour. But I do want to talk about the real quick. Yeah. What? The Bruce Arians, Byron Leftwich down there. Okay. And, you cool. know, I heard you talk. Yeah. Well, I heard you talking about it, Christopher and Paul. You know, and and Bruce Arians, whatever you guys, you can talk about it later. How he interjected or whatever, or they some people say into the game plans, and you know Parcells. And I, you know, I always hate to go back to him, but he did. I was around him the most of any other coach yeah. in, in my life. Say it. Go but ahead. He put his. He would walk into the coordinators on Tuesday night and look at their board and see what's on it. But he would always have the perception of what he wanted the game to look like, and that's what he laid out to us on Wednesdays. And that's what we went. It's not like he says, oh, I know this play. Sometimes he'd go, hey, let's throw that damn pass where we do this. He'd say it during the game. He didn't right. know the name of the call. Right. But his overall sense of what to do to win the game and how the offense is going to play and the play calling, the defense, what we – and he would interject himself, himself on both sides of the ball. He would change defensive calls. During, We're not doing that. And then, you know, as I've told you guys many times, I could stand there and wait for the signal to come in the sideline, and I could see Bill going, shut the F up, run the ball. <laughs> 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 you know, I could read his lips going, oh, man, he's killing everybody on that headset. But so just having the overall philosophy is, I think, the way to go almost as a head. I know a lot of them are calling plays, a lot of head coaches now, especially offensive guys, that's for sure. But – just having a, that thought in that way, I would think Bruce Arians would have been more involved in that yes. aspect right. than trying to come in and just start scratching and telling everything what he wanted to do specifically in a game. So right. yeah. what's the, a head coach yeah. do? Manage the players, put them in the right frame of mind during the game, manage the game. That's that's the other thing, too. You know, Managing the game, which is that takes a lot of concentration. Yeah, and he was good at that. Yeah, but I mean, for all coaches. Yeah, sure. To me, it's, yeah, manage your players, all that. But the biggest thing is manage that game. And that was probably, I knew how to do it. I really did. And I'm not even bragging. And as an announcer, <clears throat> that was the best thing I did. I understood timeouts, what to do, all that other stuff, managing the game. I was always trying to manage the game from the booth. And I know it's a lot easier in that booth than it is standing on the sideline huh. making those, you know, which – which I found out once when I coached an all-star game. I was like, damn, this is hard. You know, <laughs> no, what no do I doubt. do? It's fourth and two. Do we go for it? Do I kick? Hell, I don't know. What do you think, coach? <laughs> you know, I'm, ask, I'm asking everybody else for their opinion. I'm the one who got to make the decision. So, but, you know, that's just a little thought about no, I think you're this right whole on. Bruce Arians thing. You're, you're spot on, no doubt. I, I tried to convey that to Florio a little today and, and probably didn't do as good a job either. But Parcells is always the one that comes to my brain, too, just from my father's stories, yeah. I, always. I can still remember Dad telling a story about them getting ready to play the Eagles, right, and Parcells crossing plays off, going, we can't run that against this D-line. We can't run this. Man. And you said something like you guys went into the game with, like, 10 plays total because you were just, they were so good you were just going to be good at your 10 plays and not let them ruin the game. And I think you won that day. And so that's what oh. a head coach does do at times it was the great one i mean we had a game plan i looked at it and went are you kidding me i mean you know that big sheet you have hell it, we had nothing on it and tom coughlin who was the receiver coach was in a total <laughs> like gonna have a fit we, what are we gonna do we can we don't have any plays what are we gonna do phil i go you know i don't know coach you know this, this is all during the week and as we 
throw the ball, do all that really well, the game is over, we won, and all that. I'm walking across the field, and Tom Coughlin comes by me. He goes, he's a genius. He's a damn genius. <laughs> <laughs> Winning. I just it's unbelievable what he what we did today. I mean, we had seven pass plays in, and we threw for 280, and right over, you know, I'm like – you know, I'm like, yeah, okay, I don't know what to say to all that. I'm yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we kind of expected from him. But, yeah, if we ran the ball, I'll, I'll put the Washington Commanders in this. On the turf in Giant Stadium, Joe Morris would, let's just say he ran for 180, which he did. He had some huge games against Washington. And then if we played him four weeks later and would go down there, we wouldn't even try to run it. It would be, we're going to throw it down the field, and we're going to do it a lot. We're going to really take some shots and – and we did it, and it would be from the first play on. Yeah. Because he knew, oh, they'll get ready to stop our run game. We're not going to be able to run it. They're big, whatever. So we're just going to keep throwing it. Right. And, uh, right. yeah, it's was, it was really cool. What yeah. a, you know, he could change his philosophy from one game to the next, from one half to the second half, and that's why he was a great coach. No so. doubt. All right, we got to go. All right, I'm done. That was a good one, though. That was, was. good. We covered had you back with a bang. We covered yeah. a lot of different things. It was actually really good. Vintage. It's a good subject. So, well done, uh, You're Phil. the man, Dad. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for well, coming Well, yeah, out. you know, give me, a, give me a call about November. And you, 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 when you get a little strapped, season gets old, you need some help, you know, then you'll call me. Okay. All right, yep. But, we'll bring you in for the season preview here in a few months. <laughs> oh, the season preview. Okay. All right. <laughs> Paul, listen, good to talk to you, man. You too, Phil. And um, I don't know what to say to you, Paul, except I'm sorry. Sorry and, for uh, what? <laughs> so well, you got to work with, with you know that oh, guy next no. to you. Holy <laughs> Christ! Just no. think, I had to try to raise him. You should congratulate <laughs> me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. You're doing a great job. <laughs> so you guys keep it up, man. All I right, love Dad. listening to you. All Thanks, right, man. See, see ya. See you, buddy. See ya. Bye. Big Phil's uh, uh, crushing on on uh, social too. Uh, by the well, way, Instagram. You know, he's awesome. um he's he's actually become like a a an everyday watcher of the pod. Oh really? He wasn't always that way. Yeah. He always watch get up in the morning, watch pro football talk. But yeah, I knew that. he's gotten to a routine of, you know, in the afternoon or whatever during yeah. the week and he'll throw on our pod and he's really been listening like, to the point where I'm like, damn, you you really listen wow. to the whole thing and he's like because cool. 'cause he'll ask me questions and yeah. stuff. So it has been cool. There's no doubt. And uh, it was good to have him back on. And we will continue to have him on throughout awesome. this process. When we go Chris Sims' top 40 quarterback countdown, we'll certainly dad, get Dad involved in that too to hear his thoughts on some of this stuff. And uh, I do need to be uh, better at getting him in. Because when Dad talks too, I like it. it. It sparks things in my own brain that I want to ask and know about football yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Cool. All right. So we got some points about stuff here, all right? There we go. 2022 quarterback props. There we right. go. Should we start with the passing yards Yeah, leader? let's do that. Let's hit it. Okay. We take a peek there. Uh, Jess, Justin Herbert, number one, plus 700. We all know what plus 700 means. Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> at least one of us up here does. <laughs> Mahomes is tied with him, and uh, Brady just behind at plus 750. I'd take Brady there. Not just because he's in the headlines, but Tom's my guy. Yeah, well, they're for, for, for they're, passing yards. I'm not not predicting wins, just like yards. Yeah. Hey, I mean he, Sign you know, yeah, led up. led the league last year, right? So yeah. it is again, they're a great offense. They can protect the quarterback. It's one of my favorite offenses in football with Byron Leftwich and what they do. I mean, the top three, I think, are you should feel pretty good about that. I mean, there's there's no doubt about it. I look at that and go, yeah. I mean, that to me would be, I think, the top three. I would look at right off the bat to go, huh? Yeah. I think I would take them, but I will say on this list right here, yeah, uh, Joe Burrow and I think Dak Prescott could be the two outliers that I would look at that can maybe challenge this okay. to a degree. You know, Burrow with all that weaponry, their offensive line is going to be better. They're going to have, I think, a certain confidence and way about them to where I could see that offense even opening up more this year, and them even being more explosive on that on, on a consistent weekly basis. Yep. And then, of course, Dak Prescott and company too. You know, there's talent. They got a lot of talent. He's talented. It's a pretty good offense. Defense isn't great, which means it's going to keep the scoring going and all that. That would be the two out of the top three that I would kind of look at just to say they could challenge in the yards department. I think there's some fun long shots. And I don't know if, if we have the graphic of the guys kind of on the next level, Pete, or if we're just discussing. Okay, yeah. so um, here's what I'm going to pick out for long shots. Uh, again, this is uh, points, bed props, passing yards, leaders this next season in the NFL. Trevor Lawrence plus 3,300. I think he's going to be a lot better this year. 
Agreed. And I don't think they're going to be winning a lot of games. They're going to be behind. They're going to yeah. be chasing. Yeah, right. I, I could see him having a shit ton of passing yards. I, I, I don't disagree with that. You know, and again, I think, you know, your offensive line being a little bit better. Yeah. It's in a better system altogether with Doug Peterson and company. Yep. And you add in Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram, a tight end, a little more talent there. Yeah, I, I, I could see them putting up numbers. I don't disagree with you there. And another long shot, if we're coming off the derby and still thinking about what we saw there at Churchill Downs, yeah. how about Jared Goff at plus 8,000? Again, I think he'd be better this yeah, year in the system. Sure. Uh, you know, that see how healthy they get Yeah, with uh, Jameson Williams. Right. But um, plus 8,000? I could see him chasing a bunch of yards. Yeah, I I could see that you know, they're going to be better. I don't know if I look at him to go, I think he can be consistently good enough to put up the yards on a weekly basis. Yeah. But your point about him being better, them being better. And I, being I, behind. I, I, yes, right. I don't disagree. He will be behind in some games tr as well. I'm trying to look here if there's any other long shots that really – pop up to me a little bit like for the same reasons you said Trevor Lawrence I think Zach Wilson and that crew could actually have a pretty explosive year is throwing plus, the football plus 66 He's plus 66 right um yeah you know Russell Wilson Kirk Cousins Deshaun Watson that crew there at plus 2000 you know again I I could see Russell Wilson maybe having a type of year to I could buy that unleashing yeah. him those weapons their conference and division getting used to the new Nate Hackett offense and things catching them by surprise, he'd probably be another long shot I would look at there for sure. Plus 15,000. Got five guys there. Locke, Fields, Darnold, Corral, Heineke. Yeah. Any, anyone? Anyone get one of your dollars? No, no, they're not. They're yeah. not. Not not to be the favorite for leading the NFL in yards. <laughs> Definitely not. Not that group right there. Uh, they might surprise some people with their yards, but none of them right. are going to lead the NFL in passing yards. We've got another. Are we yeah. ready for the next, Pete? Yeah. Points bet, 2022 passing touchdown leader. No surprise. Tom Brady, number one, plus 500, and Mahomes just behind him, plus 550. I take Brady again. It, it's hard not to. Right. I mean, Stafford was second last year with 41. That's where people – I don't think people realize how many touchdown passes Stafford had. I would think, again, his play – it's only to be more comfortable and feeling better within that offense too. Yeah. Um, this one's this one's tougher to me. You know, Brady. I. I guess I I tend to I probably I would probably favor Mahomes. I, really? I feel like okay. I I would. I mean, they're always looking for cheap ways to throw the ball, do all of that. I mean, I understand your thought about Brady. You're not wrong there. You know, Mahomes, Herbert, Allen. You know, I, I could see I could see any of those guys challenging it this year. You know, what hurts sometimes guys like Allen and Mahomes too is they might get down at the three yard line and they have a quarterback design run and they run it in. They don't get the touchdown pass. Uh, there's there is that issue as well. But damn, there'll be no shortage of touchdown passes with really the top five or six guys right. on that list. That's going to be a lot of a lot of balls through the air. Looking at the long shot list here now, who's You've got ten dollars, okay? Mm. You got ten. Mm. Found it in your pocket while doing laundry. I know you don't do laundry. I'm just creating a scenario. I don't do scenario. laundry. That's right. That's so right. Who's getting your ten? Well, the, the, to me, these are the ones that are worth taking a little bit more of a bet. Like the long shot yardage, like lead the NFL in yards. One, to me, you're you're being crazy if you're picking some of the guys down the list there. This one, you can you can like justify a long shot touchdown passes. I think a little bit more than maybe the other stuff there. You know, again, like you go back to Russell Wilson at plus 1600. Mm. They're going to want to justify the trade, all the money they're paying them yeah. and everything. I can see them getting on the one inch line going, we are a blade of grass away from scoring a touchdown. Let's throw the ball to Jerry from, Judy. <laughs> from winning the Super Bowl? Are you, are you talking? Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. But that kind of same thought there. Yeah. So that's where he's a stats guy too. He he is. Yeah. The the whole Green Bay thing. That's what they are a little bit up there. Yeah. And then he's a stats guy. Yeah. So that that'll be I think one where I go. I could see him challenging like in the touchdown pass department for sure. Yep. He jumps out to me in a big way. I would say he's probably the 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 biggest like dark horse for me in my opinion. Kirk Cousins, you know, new system there as well. I could see again him having a big year statistically, with everybody kind of, you know. 
figuring out the new Kevin O'Connell offense in the NFC North, and there are the weapons. And yeah. I mean, gosh, Kirk Cousins is throwing for 33, 35 touchdown passes before. every year yeah. here recently, so he's not that far off the pace from uh, being involved in this. Points bet walked me right into this one, Chris. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. At plus 5,000, they right. have Garoppolo and Lance listed. At plus 5,000. Wow, plus 5,000. Who would get your 10 if you had to put it on one of those two guys? I'm going to go with Trey Lance all the way. All right. I am. Yes, the 49ers, I will be shocked if it's not Trey Lance. And uh, I mean, I feel like Shanahan told us at the owner's meeting uh, that you know they feel like Trey That's Lance is being going, ready yeah. to start. Right. They can say what, they, what they want uh, and do whatever they want. But, yeah, that, that'll be interesting. And, listen, I think there's some, there's some value with these bets. I do think when I think about gambling a little bit, because I have gotten involved or thought about it more over the last year and a half. These kind of bets are the ones that intrigue me, and I yeah. actually think that you, this is where you can make some money. Long shot, longer bets down the road, you know, betting on a team's success maybe at the end of the year instead of just that particular game. Yeah. Like, ooh, I like the way this team looked in the preseason, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm going to put some money down on a, like, a successful season and do that. This is the same type of thing. Uh, these are the ones I think I, I I would get into if I was into gambling a little bit more and really throwing my own money. You say you're thinking about it, like I, on, on the drive to work or like sitting down at the laptop at home, like just really like thinking when about I just sit being there, the business I got to pick games so many times. Sometimes yeah. I have to do videos for points bet and everything like that to where it's gotten me to think of those things. And to me, and talking to my man Jay Croucher, yep. I think that's the way he gambles a little bit on stuff like that, futures, stuff like that. Yeah. That, to me, seems to be where you can do it rather than the I hope my team wins or I hope my guy plays good today yeah. or I lose a lot of money. Um, so that's for you to figure out, all right? Download the PointsBet app. Use code NBC2K to sign up, all right? Get two f- risk-free bets up to $2,000. I mean, come on. doesn't get any better than that. If you're in an eligible state, PointsBet has an exclusive sign-up offer for unbuttoned listeners that you can't miss. You cannot miss it. Download the PointsBet app. Use code NBC 2K to sign up and get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. So say you bet $100 on Zach Wilson to lead the league in passing touchdowns. If you win, you'll get $4,000. But if you lose, you will still get free bets worth $100. You can't so lose. So it's a, it's a no-lose, no-lose, no-lose situation. It's a win-win is what they say. I like no-lose, right? no-lose. <laughs> <laughs> Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life. With points bet. Yeah, you really can't lose. You can't it's lose. It's win-win. No, no. Right? Uh, no, 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 no doubt about it. It's I, hard and, not you know, to become a gambler when you when you hear that. I, I know. I know. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here. You got me, like, curious now because I'm going, like, you know, I wonder some of the other guys that have led the league in touchdown passes over the last few years. We had, Le- oh, Lamar Jackson be another one you, you could certainly see there. Plus 55. Yeah, that's, I know. For a guy that's, you know, sure – Puts a lot of touchdowns on the board. Uh, that is a little low, it does seem like. But, you know, honestly, as you sit here and look. Okay, here we go. Three years ago, we had a team like Jameis Winston. He threw 33 touchdown passes. It was second in football. They didn't go to the playoffs. That was the year he threw. So, you know, to your point, there's a dark horse guy that's out of nowhere yeah. a little bit. Where, you right. know, bad defense, team's not that good. You sometimes can you know, manipulate the stats or you're playing catch up and the stats can be a lot better for you as a quarterback because of that. And if you put a hundred down on that, if I'm reading this correctly, you'll still get free bets worth one hundred if your guy doesn't come through and win. That's right. Yep. Look at you. Insane. Reading and everything I know, over here. I know. Guy. I just I'm just listening. <laughs> I'm listening. Because you are mentoring. <laughs> I'm mentoring you. You're yeah. mentoring. I'm me. mentoring. You yeah. signed up to mentor. That was me. da- that was good what dad said today. I know, right? That really he kinda put it in perspective to how like yeah Everybody's a little too crazy about the mentoring thing. Yeah. Yeah, like a little too crazy. All right. Speaking of crazy, I am doing another quarterback countdown, top 40. That'll be on Monday. You know where to find me. It shall begin for the next month. The criticizing of Chris Sims and his rankings. I love this time of year. So here we go. Please, you know, again, pay attention. You know where to find us. Everybody have a good rest of the week. Enjoy whatever, NBA playoffs, Major League Baseball, Yanks are playing good. That's a real positive thing. Or? And or 
or a USFL. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it, you had me choking. I was like, wait, what else am I missing Friday here? night. Friday, Friday night, night USA. Got? Um, I have. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually running home to do uh, to do meetings. I have the Tampa Bay Bandits. Bandits. Led, led by Todd Haley. Right. And the Michigan Panthers under the uh, leadership of Jeff Fisher. Jeff Fisher, okay. Yeah. All right. Two. They just cut their kicker. Old and bold. They missed an extra point and it. a 21-yard field He goal. deserves yeah. to be cut after that. Three-man booth. Yes. Yes. Mike Robinson, per right. usual, right. and all pro defensive lineman Cam Jordan. Wow, that's pretty good. All right. Tell Cam to stop beating up his kids in one-on-one -on -one basketball, okay? <laughs> all right. We, we watched that video today. All right, everybody, be safe, be good. Paul, you the man. Thanks for driving, the, see you, driving the ship as yeah. always. We'll see you next week. Chris Sims, Top 40 quarterback countdown coming on Chris Sims Unbuttoned on Monday. Peace. See ya. Yo, yo, what's up? Come on, man. Subscribe on YouTube to Chris Sims Unbutton Podcast. I need you. Please hit the subscribe button, please. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.